Well, this exhibit is called Dinosaurs, Ancient Fossils, New Discoveries, and it really highlights contemporary dinosaur research. Some of the big things in it are a robotic tyrannosaur, a highly accurate forest of the way northeastern China looked about 130 million years ago, and biomechanical models of animals, which really tell us a little bit about how these huge animals would have moved their necks, moved their bodies, and moved their tails. What we're trying to do is bring research, very current research, together with public programming so people feel the excitement of science. And that's what this exhibit's all about. Almost a half a million people came to this exhibition. And I think a large part of the attraction was to see what's new in dinosaur science. Dinosaurs, Ancient Fossils, New Discoveries was produced by the American Museum of Natural History in New York in collaboration with four other leading U.S. institutions, the Houston Museum of Natural Science, the California Academy of Sciences, the Field Museum, and the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. The exhibition illustrates how scientists are using an incredible array of new technologies from software to CT scans, uh, along with new ideas and new discoveries to reinterpret the world of dinosaurs. New discoveries really permeate the entire exhibit. And when I was writing the script and deciding what we would show, I really wanted to concentrate on things which have been discovered over the last 10 years. The introductory section features a relatively recent fossil discovery of a small carnivorous dinosaur called Bambi Raptor. Next to Bambi Raptor, we have CT scans that paleontologists have taken of the fossil. So right away, we're getting at the idea that new technologies, new discoveries, and new ideas come together to change the way we've previously viewed dinosaurs, and in this case, they're linked to birds. In the second section, we look at how dinosaurs really moved. And we feature biomechanical studies that are being performed by scientists in various parts of the world. There's a full-sized cast of a T-Rex looking down at visitors when they come in. There are computer interactives there, wherein you can manipulate different parameters, the posture, the muscle mass of a T-Rex, and then see how fast your T-Rex could have run. We also have a marvelous uh, robotic. It's probably the most accurate reproduction of how a Tyrannosaurus moved of anything out there. And a sauropod interactive here allows visitors to experiment with a 3D engineering model that allows them to manipulate the neck movements of sauropods and a giraffe and compare them. You know, just see a sauropod raising its head as you mo manipulate uh, the interactive but you learn that it can only raise its head so high because of the restriction of the bones. And the interactive shows you how those things work together. We incorporated a fantastic suite of educational hands-on activities. These include a three-dimensional build-your-own T-Rex. It's just very engaging, and each activity relates to points being made within the exhibition, of course. For the third section of the exhibition, which is about how dinosaurs behaved, we recreated a section of the Davenport Ranch trackway site in Texas. And Martin Lockley, a Colorado paleontologist, has really been at the forefront of a lot of this, where he's been able to look at trackways like this one behind me, dissect these almost like a crime scene to be able to determine that there were herds of dinosaurs moving across these areas and whether or not that those herds had structure to them in the way that modern large animal herds do. In one part of the exhibition, we see a large trophy wall of mounted dinosaur skulls from the three-horned triceratops to the dome-headed Pachycephalosaurus. And scientists are looking at what was the purpose, the evolutionary purpose of these growths, these horns and frills and domes. People expect answers, and they expect clear answers, definitive answers about scientific questions. But in reality, there are lots of issues in science we constantly debate about. We are not certain. There are still puzzles, there are still questions. That's why it's so exciting. If all the questions were solved, we would just have to go home. The piece de resistance in the exhibition is a large diorama exquisitely prepared featuring the 130 million year old fossil site in eastern China called the Liaoning Forest. And within this diorama, we've painstakingly recreated uh, the environment, including 35 different species of dinosaurs, reptiles, plants, insects, mammals, all as they would have coexisted. Well, one of the great things about the fossils that we've found in Liaoning is that, aside from just being great fossils, is that occasionally we've found things that even reflect behavior. Like we've found mammals that ate baby dinosaurs. We've found 
basically flocks of baby dinosaurs together. We found animals sleeping in stereotypical positions, the same as modern birds do. So the diorama itself just brings a lot of the other components of the exhibit sort of together and shows them in a living and thriving community. It's probably the most complete picture into the dinosaur world that we have. Not only are dinosaurs exquisitely preserved, their bones, their skin covering, even feathers, evidence of feathers on dinosaurs, but we have mammals with hair, we have insects and beautiful plant fossils. So we have a, 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 a direct, very clear window into the past. We can reconstruct this environment with great precision. The final section of the exhibition explores extinction and the different theories that scientists posit about what ended the age of dinosaurs, such as asteroid impact, global climate change, and massive volcanic eruptions. There were a lot of creatures that survived, alligators and crocodiles, various types of birds, fish, and so on, and so there's a wall of survivors. So again, we're showing that things are not really as they've been always taught in the past. What we try to do here is, is show the visitor that there are certain issues, like dinosaur extinction, where not all questions are resolved, that people are arguing, debating, questioning very passionately with different points of view about the evidence. I think we really created a very engaging exhibition. It's open, it's friendly, it's welcoming. You look at the graphics, you look at the text, even this diorama, it has no glass, it really is very inviting. And so what we ended up with was an opportunity for learners of all ages to explore their own questions, to learn new information, and to be surprised. This exhibition received an incredible amount of media coverage. First of all, it made the cover of Newsweek. It was in the New York Times, the Washington Post, USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, Reuters. It was uh, on CNN, BBC, Spanish television. It's just the type of project that gets international attention. To come in here and see high school groups and I think it's because of the focus on science. And then to come in here and see families with little kids, adults, grandparents, all finding a way uh, to learn something from the exhibition. The exhibition doesn't stay the same over time. It was actually designed to feature new discoveries when they're made, or to feature local scientists from what, whatever city is hosting the exhibition. So updatability is actually built into the exhibition, and was con it was conceived that way from the outset. And it really gives you a chance to teach people something a little bit about biomechanics, a little bit about functional morphology that might otherwise be a pretty boring subject. But because it is about dinosaurs, it really brings people in. And we want a, the visitor to give, feel, in a sense, like a scientist, to feel that sort of excitement, that mystery, that uncertainty, that puzzle solving, that really is part of the wonderful work we call scientific research.